So I want you to note that if we were to place matrix A and the identity matrix side by side to form an augmented matrix, then row operations on this matrix produce identical operations on matrix A and on the identity matrix. Now, on the previous theorem, either there are going to be row operations that transform matrix A to the n by n identity matrix and the n by n identity matrix to the inverse of matrix A, or matrix A will be non-invertible and the inverse does not exist. Now, we summarize these conclusions with the following algorithm. So this is an algorithm or a method for finding the inverse of a matrix A. So we are going to be given an N by N matrix A. So this is our first time seeing how to find the inverse for a matrix that's larger than a two by two matrix. So in order to find this inverse, we want to row reduce the augmented matrix where matrix A is augmented with the N by N identity matrix. So we want to row reduce this augmented matrix to row reduced echelon form. Now there's two possible outcomes that we will observe here. So we'll call these our conclusions. So the first thing that we will observe is that if matrix A is row equivalent to the n by n identity matrix, then we'll be able to observe that matrix A augmented with that n by n identity matrix is going to be row equivalent to the n by n identity matrix augmented with the inverse of matrix A. Otherwise, matrix A is non-invertible. Or in other words, we can conclude that the inverse of matrix A does not exist. So we know with case two that matrix A is non-invertible if we don't end up with the n by n identity matrix on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead now and put this algorithm into practice by considering the following example. Find the inverse of the following matrix if it exists. So here we are given a three by three matrix A. So in order to find the inverse, we need to use the algorithm for finding the inverse of A. So to do that, we are going to need to row reduce the augmented matrix where we have matrix A augmented with the three by three identity matrix to row reduced echelon form. So here we go. We have matrix A, which is 1, negative 1, 5, negative 2, 5, negative 4, and then minus 1, 6, 5. And we are augmenting matrix A with the 3 by 3 identity matrix. So we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Beautiful. So... We've got a lot going on, so simply take your time. So from our first pivot, we want to use this pivot to eliminate the entries below it. And we'll need two steps here. We'll do the first row plus the second row to attain the new and reduced second row. And then we'll also need to go ahead and do minus five times the first row plus the third row to attain the new and reduced third row. So here we go. The first row of this equivalent matrix will be the same. We have 1, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0. We then have 1 minus 1, which leaves us with 0. We have negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Negative 1 plus 6 is 5. 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1, and 0 plus 0 is 0. Next, we have negative 5 plus 5 is 0. 
We have positive 10 minus 4 is 6. We'll have positive 5 plus 5 is 10. We'll have negative 5 plus 0 is negative 5. 0 plus 0 is 0. And 0 plus 1 is 1. Beautiful. So our first column is all set. And we're ready to move to our second pivot position. So we want to use this pivot to eliminate the entry below and above it. So we have two steps here. We need to scale the second row by a factor of two-thirds and add this to the first row to produce the new and reduced first row. And then we'll also need to take minus two times the second row and add this to the third row to produce the new and reduced third row. So here we go. So our middle row stays as it is. We have zero, three, five, one, one, zero. So starting with the third row, we have zero plus zero is zero. We have negative six plus six is zero. We have negative 10 plus 10 is 0. We have negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. We have negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. And 0 plus 1 is 1. So pause for a cause here. Notice how our third row on the left hand side is all zeros. So we can immediately scratch that other row operation and simply leave that first row as it is. One, negative two, negative one, one, zero, zero. Now the reason we're pausing is this row of zeros. This is letting us know that no further row operations will transform this matrix to the identity matrix. And so from this third row there, that row of zeros, we can say that further row operations will not transform the matrix that we have here. So it will not transform this matrix to the desired three by three identity matrix. So that's it. We're done. This allows us to conclude that matrix A is non-invertible. Or in other words, the inverse of matrix A does not exist. And again, that's because we're seeing this row of zeros. No matter what we do, no matter what row operations we apply here, we're never gonna get the identity matrix. So therefore, matrix A is non-invertible and the inverse does not exist.